like most of the merch at this shoe store. But you know what's funny? Bill Maher is the racist white man who's like, um, I'm looking for reasons not to vote for the black woman. Doug, what the are you saying? You're hallucinating. Bill Maher still thinks Kamala isn't right wing enough. A new rule with only a couple of weeks ago. It's not too late for Kamala Harris to do what many have been calling for her to do since she became the candidate. Have a sister soldier moment. And if you weren't around in 1992, let me tell you what a sister soldier moment means. It's when you earn cred with the middle of the road voters by standing up to an extremist in your own coalition. Oh, oh. <sighs> I have chills, dude. The disdain that I have, the hatred that I have in my heart for this man is incredible. You do not understand. One of my least favorite people on the planet. What do you want Kamala Harris to do or say, Bill Maher, that she's stepping out of the race and endorsing Donald Trump? What more can she do? I mean, he's gonna tell us. For Bill Clinton in 1992, that was a notorious rapper. No, not him. <laughs> No, Sister Soldier, whose music is not much remembered, but her words are. After the L.A. riots in 92, she said, if there are any good white people, I haven't met them. <laughs> now, in fairness, she had just come out of William Sonoma. <laughs> <laughs> but she also said, if black people kill black people every day, why not have a week and kill white people? And Bill Clinton, looking for an easy target, and also well aware that killing white people would decimate our Olympic snowboard team, <laughs> rebuked Soldier and came out against taking a week, week to kill Whitey. And yes, that... Like, dude, when stuff like this happens, okay, here's what a normal person should do. And I'll give you an example from my experience, which is obviously not the same as, like, a president, okay? When people that are like technically associated with you or seen as like on your side say things that you don't agree with or say things that people want to associate with you in an effort to attack you the smart move in that circumstance is just be like this is irrelevant because it is okay because it is like ain't nobody is gonna think that a man from arkansas is like, yeah, actually, I do believe that we should kill Wadi. Like, no one thinks this, okay? So there is no reason to put your foot down and just, like, go after a rapper. You know what I mean? It's just a stupid thing that people do in an effort to say, I'm on your side, okay? I would never. And they do it in a way where, obviously, it's like the, wow, brave decision, Bill Clinton. Thank you for saying you don't want you know, attacks on random white people, okay? Like, no sh I hate this, I hate this, this very cynical, I hate this incredibly cynical thing that people do all the time. It's been going on for decades, going on for generations, it still happens today. It's just like, you're not brave for saying this, actually. I would go so far as say it's cowardly. No one is expecting you to defend the rapper, but if you're you know, if you are even speaking on this matter, you are offering it more attention than it deserves. It's very frustrating. It was seen as courageous. It was an easy win. Clinton won over independent whites, and it didn't hurt him with black voters who went for him overwhelmingly and even used to refer to him as the first black president, which so went to his head that he later dated a white girl with a fat ass. <laughs> But that's a different... Like, this is something that I've been very frustrated with the Democrats time and time again. Republicans will find, like, one random BLM protester or something to point to and say, this guy hates white people. They, they signal... They signal that, like... Uh, they signal racist tropes. Like, oh, black people are angry and violent and they want to kill all white people. Yada, yada, yada. Okay? It has no bearing on institutional racism and the systems that are designed a certain way. And then... Democrats will just sit there and be like, oh, yeah, you're right. This is not us, actually. I'm so sorry. Uh, this is not us. It's like the same self-goal, own goal of, like, signing a messaging bill 
that says that you are not a socialist. Okay? Democrats love doing this dumb shit where they'll go out and, and sign a messaging bill that says, like, America will never be socialist and we are not socialist. And it's a stupid thing to do because Republicans are still going to say you're a socialist anyway, you idiot. No one is looking at that and going, well, they signed a messaging bill that says you're not socialist. They don't even understand what it means. And I'm not expecting, I'm not expecting the Democrats to be like, we are socialists, we love socialism or defend socialism. Just don't do dumb shit for no reason. Don't capitulate to cynical right-wing framing for no reason. Now you have elevated this conversation. Now you are simply, you are simply saying like, this is not us. And the people that are in your base are going to look at that and go, okay, this is not us. That's fine. You know, we didn't think that it was us, but it's all good. But the right will still go, no, that is you. That's you. All you've done is validate the cynical right-wing uh, framing. Republicans never do that. They never back away. They never back down. And they never, ever adopt left-wing framing on okay? Even when it's literally valid. Even when it is straightforward. Even when it is so valid to be like Trump is a fascist. What Republican congressperson is, has gone out and said, you know what? And I'm talking like, you know, the overwhelming majority of the Republican party. Like this would be the equivalent of like JD Vance coming out and being like, yes, uh, uh people have said that Trump is a fascist. Um, we, we agree with this assessment. We're really sorry. Or uh, associations with like the proud boys. Trump never gave up on that. The Democrats were like, dude, what the these are your supporters and they're doing violence on the streets. And Trump was like, stand back, stand down. Like they never concede. They never concede to left wing framing on issues. Even if the left wing framing on an issue is cynical or not correct. Think about that. The most were like, yo, your supporters are on the street saying Jews will not replace us. What the is that about? He said, both sides has some good people. That's crazy. That's crazy. He straight up was like, yeah, there's very fine people on both sides. Brother, one side had Nazis. What do you mean there were very fine people on the Nazi side? There were no fine people there. Okay? It doesn't make sense. And Democrats are constantly, constantly doing this. They constantly turn around and they're like, yeah, you're right. You're so right. We hate these people. Just don't... I'm not expecting them to defend these people or these sorts of sentiments. I'm simply expecting them to be smart and not bring any of that up at all. Like pro-Palestinian protests happen on college campuses. There's, uh, there's a couple uh, uh, dummies that will be like, Hamas will kill all Zionists in America, okay? Someone says some shit like that. No reason. You are under zero obligation to come out and be like, yeah, I recognize this person as a supporter of mine, and I'm actually saying I am not this person. I do not agree with them. Because... People will never read it as that, okay? There's no one that thought you were that person, okay? No real serious human being had thought that you were that person. That's why I laugh when people are like, I'm a single issue voter and my issue is anti-Semitism on college campuses and whether you are sufficiently pro-Israel or not. It's like, dog, if someone at this stage is still, uh, you know, asking Kamala Harris if she's like pro-Israel or not, then they're voting for Trump. They're not undecided, okay? Or they're, or they're just like the most delusional person on the planet. Of course she's pro-Israel. What do you mean? What kind of question is this? How can you still be undecided on this matter? It's so stupid. I hate that. It's a tactical mistake from the Democrats to regularly carve out uh, certain aspects that are being cynically used against them. Like certain cynical messages like, oh, the Democrats are the pro-Hamas party? Like no one believes that, dude. What the are you saying? So anytime you come out and go, we are the anti-Hamas party, you're just an idiot. It's just like a tactical misstep. I'm not, my expectation, once again, I'm going to repeat this over and over again. My expectation is never from a national campaign to come out and be like, we are, you know, long live the resistance, okay? <laughs> like, that's not, you know, intifada revolution. That's not what I'm expecting. I would not expect that at all. I would, as a matter of fact, say that that would probably uh, have serious repercussions in the opposite direction for the campaign if they were to do that. Americans are anti-war broadly, but they're not like pro-resisting against the uh, American imperialism. Print history lesson. <laughs>
The lesson for today is that the last two successful two-term Democratic presidents After this, I'm going to watch Joe Rogan. Both had sister soldier moments. Oh, yes, Obama had one, too. In 2008, Republicans thought they had him beat when the man who was Obama's reverend in Chicago claimed the government purposefully engineered AIDS to kill minorities and spoke the words, God damn America. And that is the kind of this place sucks rhetoric you're only allowed to use if you're a Republican. <laughs> but Obama reasoned then, as Kamala should now, that, yeah, there are some Americans who are not going to vote for me just because I'm black. And while I can still win without them, I can't win if I lose the person who will vote for a black president but is kind of looking for a reason not to. So he made an amazing speech about race and called Reverend Wright's words a bunch of rants that aren't grounded in truth. He said Wright expressed a profoundly distorted view of this country, a view that sees white racism as endemic and that elevates what is wrong with America above all that we know is right with America. It's funny because like Reverend Wright was 100% correct and Barack Obama was absolutely being a cuck here. But of course, that's not going to stop Bill Maher from, uh, you know, saying this is fantastic. Wait, what was it? What was the Reverend Wright uh, moment? Hold on. Which one so was it? There was a bunch of things about race and called Reverend. <laughs> yeah, the government lied about injecting the HIV virus as a means of genocide against people of color. God damn America. First of all, that wasn't the entirety of the uh, speech. I can't believe this motherfucker's clip chimping Reverend Wright from like literally multiple decades ago at this point that's crazy the disrespect bro yeah god damn america that's in the bible fantastic clip a classic hasanabi uh broadcast special don't give me the boondocks one give me the real one here this is the where governments lie god does not lie where governments change god does not change and i'm through now but let me leave you with one more thing governments fail The government in this text, comprised of Caesar, Quirinius, Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate, the Roman government failed. The British government used to rule from east to west. The British government had a union jack. She colonized Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, and Hong Kong. Her navies ruled the seven seas all the way down to the tip of Argentina in the Falklands. But the British government failed. The Russian government failed. The Japanese government failed. The German government failed. And the United States of America government, when it came to treating her citizens of Indian descent fairly, she failed. She put them on reservations. When it came to treating her citizens of Japanese descent fairly, she failed. She put them in internment prison camps. When it came to treating the citizens of African descent fairly, America failed. She put them in chains. The government put them on slave quarters, put them on action block, auction blocks, put them in cotton fields, put them in inferior schools, put them in substandard housing, put them in scientific experience, experiments, put them in the lowest paying jobs, put them outside the equal protection of the law, kept them out of their racist bastions of higher education and locked them into positions of hopelessness and helplessness. The government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three strike law, and then wants us to sing God bless America. No, 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 not God bless America, God damn America that's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America for treating her citizens as less than human. God damn America as long as she tries to act like she is God and she is supreme. That's my goat right there. That's in the Bible. I love that. Anyway, um, isn't that great? That like an objectively correct, an objectively true, objectively correct rant multiple decades later, can be uh abused like this can be just and yeah and not only is it being abused but then also this cynical racist weirdo is presenting that as a positive thing it's
fucked up. There are some Americans who are not going to vote for me just because I'm black. And while I can still win without them, I can't win if I lose the person who will vote for a black president but is kind of looking for a reason not to. So he made an amazing speech about race and called Reverend Wright's words a bunch of rants that aren't grounded in truth. He said Wright expressed a profoundly distorted view of this country, a view that sees white racism as endemic and that elevates what is wrong with America above all that we know is right with America. And he won big. Now Kamala could make her own Reverend Wright speech and ask all white Americans to please understand as much as you can how much in 2020 the sight of a black man being slowly murdered with a white cop's knee on his neck would affect you if that was the history of your race. I think most Americans would be sympathetic. And then admit that in 2020, the left got a little carried away. Carried away, like most of the merch at this shoe store. You know what's funny? Well, not Bill Maher, but you know what's funny? Bill Maher is the racist white man who's like, um, I'm looking for reasons not to vote for the black woman. Like, dog, what the f are you saying? You're hallucinating. There has never been a moment where Kamala Harris or Joe Biden has ever, ever in a million f years not done exactly what you're talking about in terms of the left got carried away. As a matter of fact, that's all they talked about leading up to the 2020 election and far beyond the 2020 election. As a matter of fact, that kind of capitulation of right-wing framing on the issue of crime literally almost cost them massive losses in blue enclaves like New York. It actually did tilt a seat for a guy that lied about everything in his background and had to resign in disgrace, George Santos. Stop giving credence to stupid-ass right-wing panics. I hate this Get it carried away? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing at this, Van Jones? Once in a while, they need a <laughs> yeah, anyway. Looting was rebranded as justice shopping. We stopped arresting shoplifters. Anti-racist baby was a bestseller. Corporation. Dude, the looting panic was completely made up, okay? Organized retail theft, once again, a complete invention. The media abdicated its responsibility to accurately assess what was going on and totally dropped the ball on this issue. One of my most resilient, most prescient takes, and people would yell at me all the time in the same exact way that Bill Maher is talking here. Hassan, you love crime. Or even worse, they would say, Hassan, you just don't, you just can't ever criticize black people. Like, you're actually racist because... You just think it's cool when black people loot. When in fact, the data on organized retail theft or just like massive retail thefts leading to uh, a, a uh, stores closing in certain districts was not real. It was an invention. It was a f invention. Just like when people say California is a crime ridden hole. Because of, uh, uh, because of a, a lack of prosecutorial interest in, in going after people who are uh, stealing things worse th uh, I mean, uh, worth less than, what, uh, $2,000 or whatever? Texas has even more liberal laws surrounding the matter. Our perspective on this is completely shifted. After half of these people have openly demonstrated that they lied about this and the media regularly writes articles about how, like, why is there so much crime panic when it seems like crime is down? When data shows crime is down, why do Americans still falsely believe that there is crime everywhere? Like, they write articles on it all the time now. Bill Maher is still running on the crime panic narrative in 2024 when crime is down across the board, Chad. The only area where crime actually went up significantly was homicides. That's the only area that it went up. For a, 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 there was a brief blip, and that is significant. But what's wild about this is that homicides are down too. They're down. These guys are still doing this. That's crazy. And Bill is doing this funny thing where he's like lumping in things that are 
worthy of like uh, uh, comedic criticism, like anti-racist baby being sold, uh, no, being the, the highest sold book or whatever, with like objectively racist took DEI to ludicrous lengths. We opened our hearts to all who wanted to come here and then also our borders. Portland decriminalized all drugs and Seattle set up a no cop zone until they had to reverse course on both. Standardized testing was dropped until schools saw how dumb that was. And yet, the head of the teachers union in Chicago still maintains that testing is, quote, junk science rooted in white supremacy. And her union tweeted during COVID, when many Americans felt we could have gotten back to normal sooner, that the push to reopen schools is rooted in sexism, racism, and misogyny. No, it was rooted in reading, writing, and arithmetic. <laughs> the teaching of which is apparently job none in Chicago because only about one in four students in the city are proficient in either math or English. And absent. Yeah, I wonder where that's coming from, dude. The teachers' union or the lack of adequate funding in the Chicago public school system? Hmm. Fun fact for those of you who don't know, Chicago Public Schools, 90% of the black and brown students in the entire state of Illinois are in the Chicago Public School System. Just, you know, something to consider. Senteeism is off the charts. The teachers there want to raise now. And look, I'm always all for all teachers always getting a raise everywhere. I hate kids. I can't imagine being around them all day. <laughs> But I also think Kamala Harris could have a moment if she trotted out her favorite phrase and said, let me be very clear. Our schools need to do better. Our kids need to be in school, and when they're there, they need to have the phones off and the brains on, learning the basic things we used to teach. And the idea that testing is rooted in white supremacy is in itself a racist belief that says black children can't compete with white children on tests, which they surely can. That line will get you an applause break from all sides. When Kamala says, we're not going back, the undecided voter thinks, no, I don't want to get on the short bus back to Trump town. But I also don't want to go back to 2020. Please, God, don't make me sit through another one of those corporate mandated sensitivity training sessions. <laughs> <laughs> When the Harris campaign launched, they got great traction by calling Trump and Vance weird. That was good. Weird was working. People are tired of weird. And ever since Donald Trump decided to dominate our lives, <laughs> the Democrats' <laughs> argument has been, we'll restore normal. Well, if what you're selling is let's be normal again, here's an idea. Be normal. Um, <laughs> America. One thing to remember is that he's talking about how like in 2020, the left got out of control. It's really interesting that he's making that argument because the 2020 campaign was uh, objectively more progressive than this current campaign. And Bill Maher seemingly has not uh, been satiated of his thirst for even more moderate positions, apparently. More right wing positions. Let's be real. Let's call it what it is. And yet in 2020, Joe Biden won you idiot what are you talking about in 2020 joe biden's campaign performance was objectively better than kamala harris's current campaign performance what the are you talking about it seems like it didn't matter at all for many americans what american right now is still talking about 2020 dude only bill maher oh man remember how the left went too far in 2020 that's why i'm voting for donald trump like, yeah that guy was gonna vote for donald trump doesn't need a revolution it needs fixing I, I hate this shit. What a f pathetic little dumbass he is. Just horrible instincts in general, too. So, 